At the base of the sphinx between its two great paws, you will find a stone slab standing tall that tells the story of a dream, a prophecy, and its fulfillment. It's also one of the oldest known restoration projects of all time. This is the Dream Stele. friends welcome back to dig it with raven today we are traveling all the way to the great sphinx at giza to talk about one of the coolest ancient restoration projects ever oh yes this is like the perfect mix of archaeology and conservation for me like if i had to be a story i would be this story some of you may not know that i am also a art conservator as well as an archaeologist. My first uh, master's degree was in art conservation where I did a lot of work on archaeological artifacts. So this is like just like the perfect melding of my two worlds and it's just one of the most amazing stories. It's one of my favorite things and not a lot of people know about it and it deserves a lot more attention. So I brought this video to you. It was one of the top voted ones on my Patreon for 2022 so you have them to thank for also if you want to join in on the votes and actually have your say in what videos that i produce go on over to patreon become a patron and then you get access to a lot of things including polls to see what's going to come out next so without further ado let's get on to it because i have led you on for long enough now and i'm not going to be that guy from dinder i'm not i promise the dream stele also known as the sphinx stele is actually the first recorded mention we have of the great sphinx of giza it was erected by Tutmos IV, the eighth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, who ruled from 1400 to 1390 BCE. Now, the Sphinx itself is kind of a mystery. If you ever YouTube or Google the Sphinx, there's a lot of conspiracy videos, a lot of ancient aliens videos, um, this like Sphinx erosion theory, all this drama. Like, yes, it is a mystery but it's not that much of a mystery. The favorite idea of the Sphinx is that it depicts the Pharaoh Khafre, who is the guy that built the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is what you can see behind the Sphinx when you see it in those grand, amazing photos, but we don't have any inscriptions tying the two together. So even though we can do all of the archeological stuff that, you know, as much as we can of tying the two together, unless we find a giant slab of stone somewhere that says, this is the Sphinx, it was built by Khafre, will never be 100% certain, which is actually the case for most archeology. span So it's, it's not like it's anything new, but we're not here to talk about that stuff. We're actually jumping 1000 years into the future. We are time traveling a thousand years from when the Sphinx was built. So from the fourth dynasty in Egypt to the 18th dynasty. And oh my God, Egyptian history is just so vast. It is so vast. Sometimes, it hits me and I understand it. And then sometimes it hits me and I don't understand it. The Sphinx was a ruin in ancient Egypt. The Sphinx was a ruin in ancient Egypt. Mind blowing. I love it. The Dream Stele measures 3.6 meters or 12 feet tall, weighs 15 tons, and was originally part of the back wall of a small open air chapel built by Tutmos IV between the paws of the Sphinx. The stele was rediscovered in 1818 during excavations overseen by Giovanni Battista Caviglia. The upper portion of the stele depicts Tutmos IV making offerings to the Sphinx, which you can see is sat upon a high pedestal with a door at the base. This kind of pedestal that the Sphinx is on is probably just a artistic liberty that the artist took when he was carving the stele to just bring the Sphinx up to the level of the Pharaoh. But of course it is led some people to go off and assume that there's some sort of secret passageway and secret room that leads under the sphinx to like this giant chamber of secrets again that's a different video we're not here to look at the pretty pictures we're here for the writing and underneath this scene in the lunette of the stele is where the real story begins the inscriptions tell the tale of what happened when tutmos the fourth visited the sphinx as a young prince one of these days, it came to pass that the king's son, Tutmus, came, coursing at the time of midday, and he rested in the shadows of this great god. Essentially, what that means is Tutmos was out somewhere in Giza for some reason, and it was midday, the sun was shining, it was really, really hot, he was overstricken by the heat, and he needed to take rest. And in the sands, he saw what was left 
of the Sphinx because it was all covered up in sand. He went up to the Sphinx, he got all cozy in the shade of this giant statue up in the sand, and then he fell asleep. And of course then, in his slumber, he had a dream. And in that dream, he found that the majesty of this revered God speaking with his own mouth as a father speaks with his son, saying, Behold thou me, my son Totmes, I am thy father, Horem Akat Kepre Bre Atum. I will give thee my kingdom upon earth at the head of the living. You will wear the red crown and the white crowns of Egypt. You will have domain over the two lands. All of that, you know, like royal decree stuff, you know? Then we get to the good part. The god eventually then says like, hey, look at me. Look at this horrible condition that I'm in. The sand's all the way up to my neck. I'm drowning. No one's been taking care of me as this big statue over the last thousand years that I've been built. The sand of the desert which I sit upon has now reached me and covered all of my limbs. The Sphinx says, save me so that all that is in my heart will come true. So essentially what this god in the Sphinx is saying is, clear me of all the sand, make me look pretty again, restore me to my previous greatness, and you will become ruler of all of Egypt. Prophecies, man, they're just like, always so weirdly worded, like why can't they just be so straightforward? Why can't they just be like, hey listen, if you do this thing and this thing happens, then you get this. Because then I think a lot more people would do the things. Just food, food for thought. If there are people up there that like want things done, just be more direct about it, I think. The Stele breaks off shortly after that encounter and we don't really know what it says, but it's safe to assume that it's a response from Tutmos IV and then an account of all of the works that he did in order to restore the Sphinx. And this restoration like clearly obviously happened because we have this stealer in between the paws of the Sphinx, which means the sand was at one point cleared away in the time of the 18th dynasty and that was put there. Tutmos IV likely cleared all the sand away from the paws of the Sphinx and the body, built several enclosure walls to protect it, and in return the Sphinx took the form of the sun god and made Tutmos IV king and ruler of all Egypt. And that's all happily ever after. Or is it? Conservation is never finished. Once you do a treatment or an entire restoration, it only lasts for so long until you need to do another treatment or a retreatment or, you know, it, it's just things keep degrading over time. Even the conservation treatments will degrade over time. It's just like anything really. Everything needs regular maintenance to keep in good working order. Cars, our bodies, our, our mental health, <laughs> and the same thing went for the Sphinx. Archaeologist Mark Lanner, who is the pyramid expert, he is the Giza guy. He spent his entire life working in Giza. He spent five years living between the paws of the Sphinx, and um, I will be jealous of him until the day I die, because that would be amazing. And he went over every square inch of that statue. Every inch he looked at everything for five years, every stone, every pebble, and he concluded that the Sphinx had undergone at least five major restorations since 1400 BCE. Which, if you were listening at the beginning of this video, is when the IV was alive, which means he was one of the major restoration projects. It was a real thing. It actually happened. So this man, the IV, kick-started the entire tradition of performing restoration projects of the Sphinx, which is why the Sphinx is still here today. So, ah, this is amazing. The existence of this dream stele and the proclaimed legitimization of Tutmos IV's rule over Egypt gave us more insight than just a restoration project though. It may actually point to some domestic familial drama within the royal family and the seizing of the throne of Egypt. The Sphinx's promise to make Tutmos IV the ruler of Egypt if he clears the sand has led to speculation that he wasn't the crown prince and he may have seized power from his elder brothers. This theory does hold a bit of water because if he was the crown prince, he would have just ascended the throne and there would be no need for him to really put out any sort of legitimization of him becoming king or the gods wanting to him to become king because he was 
was already the crown prince, so there was no need to. Oh, Tutmos, you sneaky, sneaky man. Like, what were you up to? And what sort of naughty things did you do? Using divine determination to legitimize rule is not actually a new thing to Tutmos IV. And in fact, it was quite popular in the 18th dynasty in ancient Egypt. The amazing Hatshepsut did this with carvings in her temple of Deir el Medina and other places. The pharaoh Tutmos III did it after her. And even Tutmos IV's father, Amenhotep II, did it. And so, of course, it could be some sort of, like, familial tradition that started with a Jepsut, and everyone's like, well, you know, it kind of works if you just kind of also put that the gods wanted you to be king. And, of course, we'll never be 100% sure, because it's archaeology, of his ascension and legitimacy to the throne, but he does seem to be following a trend. Not only that, the use for restoration for legitimacy and political gain is also something that we see again and again throughout history. A lot of leaders and political movements use the past to connect themselves to something greater and to create this larger sense of legitimization, especially if they want to gain a lot of power very quickly. A great example is Benito Mussolini's desire to restore the ancient Roman Empire. He implemented a campaign that saw the construction of the Via dei Fori Imperiali, which is an avenue that bisects the imperial forms of Roman emperors, and he also oversaw the restoration of ancient monuments. So that's the political side of the dream stele. But could Tutmos IV have actually had a dream where the Sphinx spoke to him, like, he actually might have. You know these videos are never gonna be a simple clear-cut thing for me. No, 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 no. We're gonna go into all the layers and all the detail. We're discovering all the things, man. Also, I just get into these, like, weird holes when I'm researching and just all this stuff comes out. And I love it, and I need to share it with you, and I want to make sure that you are all educated and know all of the things. So let's talk about this weird dream that actually might have happened. In 2012, Dr. Hutan Ashrafian of Imperial College London came up with this theory that the early death of Tutmos IV and other prominent pharaohs of the 18th dynasty, including Tutankhamun and Akhenaten, was likely a result of a familial temporal epilepsy. This could actually account for Tutmos IV death and his religious vision that was described on the dream stele because this type of epilepsy is associated with spiritual visions and religiosity. So you tell me what you think it is. Is the dream stele political propaganda to legitimize the rule of a usurper or is it the result of an epileptic episode? Let me know in the comments below. I really want to know what you think. That is it for today's video. I hope you liked that story as much as I do. It really just encapsulates for me like my two passions and it's awesome if you liked that video of course go ahead and smash that like button down below don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss out on another upload and if you like the channel you want to help support it and get early access to all my videos head on over to patreon and become a patron the link is just in my description down below here are all of my socials and as always stay dirty my friends <laughs>